Hey everyone, welcome back to series of theoretical interview questions for SQL. This is the fourth video in this series. After watching this video, you will be able to answer the question What are Cor's 12 rules for RDBMS, which are also known as relational model? Before watching this video, make sure that if you have subscribed to my channel and hit the bell icon to get a notification for upcoming videos. So let's start the video. Who is EF Cor? Edgar Frank Cott, a British-American computer scientist, worked at IBM in 1960s. During his time at IBM, he contributed significantly to the field of database management. Cott formulated 12 rules which starts from zero. These rules provided a framework to ensure that databases adhere to the principles of the relational model, guaranteeing the data integrity, consistency, and ease of use. According to him, any DBMS which follows relational model will eventually become a DBMS. Let's see what are those rules. The foundation rule. According to this rule, we can store the data in multiple tables. If needed, we can establish a connection between the tables with the help of a key attributes. In order to create a relationship between two tables, we, ha we have to use a primary key in one table. After that, we have to create a reference of that primary key in another table using a foreign key, as shown in example. This is how we can establish a connection between multiple tables. Next is, first rule is information rule. According to this rule, the data entered into the cell must always be a single value. If you want to store a multiple values, then you have to create another column to store that information as shown in the employee table where some employees are working in a multiple department. Next rule is guaranteed access rule. According to this rule, we can retrieve data from the tables using the table name, primary key and any other different column names. Let's consider I have a two table department and employee and I want to know the department number of the employee whose name is Sagar. This is the query we can use to retrieve the department number of the employee whose name is Sagar. Next rule is systematic treatment of a null values. This rule says that in DBMS, null values represent missing or inapplicable information. Therefore, we have to treat null values very systematically. This example shows how we can store null values in tables. We can treat null values systematically by allowing null values in the column while creating a table, by inserting a null as a missing value, by handling nulls in queries using is null and is not null. Also, we can replace null values using a built-in function such as col s and if null. Next rule is dynamic online catalog. So according to this rule, we store and retrieve everything in the form of a tables, including metadata also. Metadata is nothing but it is a detail about the data. We use information underscore schema to query the metadata of the database structure. This is an example which is showing how we can query table structure using an information underscore schema. Next rule is comprehensive data language. According to this rule, uh, there must be a one language that support data definition, data manipulation, data constraint, authorization, and transaction. Next rule is view updating rule. According to this rule, views allow users to see a subset of the data and should be modifiable whenever possible. And this is a diagram showing the data abstraction level where physical level deals with the how data is stored, logical level deals with what data is stored and the relations between the data. View level is the highest level in the data abstraction dealing with the users and access to the data. At this level, users can interact with the system using an interface or a GUI. There can be a multiple views for the same databases. Next rule is high level operations. According to this, a DBMS must support high level operations like insert, update and delete in order to become a RDBMS.
Next rule is physical data independence. According to this rule, changes in how data is stored should not affect how data is accessed logically. This means that underlying storage can be modified without impacting the application. Next rule is logical data independence. According to this rule, the changes to the logical schema such as uh, adding a new column should not require changes to the application that access the data. Next rule is integrity independence. According to this rule, integrity constraint like check and foreign keys must be stored in a catalog, not in the application program and must be enforced by the DBMS. Next rule is distribution independence. This rule says that the distribution of the database across multiple locations should not affect how application interact with the data. For example, moving a part of database to the different server should not require changes to the application code. Last rule is non-subversion rule. According to this rule, integrity constraint cannot be bypassed by using a low-level operations. The database must enforce all integrity rules even for a low-level access. For example, if we have a salary column with a check constraint stating that salary must be greater than zero and we are attempting to add a salary less than zero, then it will be rejected. I know guys, it's very difficult to remember all these rules. That's why I have listed important points to remember for any DBMS to become a RDBMS and those are the data entered into a cell must be always single valued. According to EF code, we can store data in a multiple tables if needed. We can establish a connection between the tables with the help of a key attribute. In RDBMS, we can store everything in the form of a tables, including a metadata. Metadata is a detail about the data. The data entered into the table can be validated in two steps. One is by assigning a data types, which is mandatory, and another one is by assigning a constraint, which is optional. This is all about in this video, guys. I hope you liked this video. If you want this PDF, check out my LinkedIn profile. Thank you so much for watching this video.